So far, we have mostly looked at the long arms of the Union and Confederacy, but handguns were prized weapons as well. The most widely used revolver of the Civil War was the 44 caliber 1860 Colt Army model. Over 125,000 were purchased from Colt's manufacturing company by the Union and sent to troops in the field. In the months leading up to the war, some southern states stocked up on arms from Colt and other manufacturers, but the federal government put a halt to that after the outbreak of hostilities. A muzzle-loading, single-action, six-shot revolver, the Colt Army model was accurate up to about 100 yards. The 1861 Colt Navy model was similar to the 1860 Colt Army revolver, but with a slightly shorter barrel and less recoil. The model 1851 Colt Navy revolver is termed Navy not because it was intended for issue to Navy personnel, but because it had a Navy motif engraved upon its cylinder. Uh, this particular pistol is um, 36 caliber and it is a cap and ball revolver because it takes percussion caps to fire it and uh, you can load this pistol with loose powder and ball but you can also use a pre-made paper or linen cartridge. Uh, to load this weapon it's really quite simple. Uh, you put it on half cock, one click of the hammer will free up the cylinder to rotate freely. Underneath the barrel on this hinged pivot is a ramrod. You unclip it simply from its catch under the barrel and that frees it up for movement. You'll move it upright and you'll load the powder and the ball in each cylinder as you rotate it. You'll ram that down with the rammer, like so. Then you'll use this little cutout to put a percussion cap on each cone or nipple. Once all six of those are loaded, a process which can take um, about 10 minutes roughly, sometimes a lot less, uh, then you're ready to fire. Well, this uh, Colt Navy along with the Colt Army revolver were the w most widely used revolvers during the uh, Civil War. Handguns were prized weapons, but hard to come by except for cavalry and officers. John Meade Gould of Maine wrote of an experience demonstrating the value of a gun that could fire six times without reloading. The story of Walton was told by the citizens is brief. He was far behind the regiment when the rebel cavalry made a dash upon the stragglers. Walton fired and ran into the field thinking perhaps that the fences would save him from pursuit. Some fine rider the citizens said it was General Ashby himself, followed him and called surrender. Walton still retreated, loading. He was a stubborn, self-willed fellow. To surrender without a fight was no part of his nature. He said only, I won't surrender. Therefore, poor Walton was shot before he could reload his musket. With these two combatants, the question was not who fought the better. It was a contest of the revolver with the slow-loading muzzle loader, and the revolver won. As in Gould's story of poor Walton, most revolvers held by the Union or Confederacy ended up with the cavalry. The revolver was truly the ideal weapon for cavalry. They were also popular among the guerrilla fighters in the border states. The six guns were the perfect weapon for ambushes. When a small band of bushwhackers in Kentucky, Missouri, or Arkansas ambushed an unsuspecting unit, whether Confederate or Union, that unit's superior rifles were unlikely to have a chance against the hailstorm of bullets flying from the guerrillas' six guns. These guerrilla fighters would carry multiple six guns so they would never find themselves unable to shoot back. 
When federal soldiers killed some of Bloody Bill Anderson's Missouri Raiders, they collected 30 revolvers from the six corpses. The American Civil War would change firearms, and firearm innovations would change war. The explosion of modern arms that came out of the war would change the face of the American West. And the American West would create a mythical archetype, the gunslinging cowboy, that would forever affect the world's vision of the gun and the evolution of the firearm. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.